Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. This was a requested video and this person wanted to know how to do collection but only when the player is holding a tool. So the way this is going to work, as long as I'm holding this tool here, which is the little pumpkin basket, I can collect the items behind me. But if I don't have it equipped, then nothing's going to happen. So you can see right now, I don't have the tool equipped and I'm not collecting these items. But if I equip the tool and then go back and touch these items again, I collect them. These golden balls right here are worth one candy. And then these bowls in the back are worth 10. So you can see when I collect those, I got 10 points. Anytime I collect the balls, they are one point. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. There's a few setup steps that we need to do first, and then we'll start with the scripting. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to store all the items that we want to be able to collect inside of a folder. So if you click on the workspace and then the plus sign, go ahead and add a folder. After you add the folder, we're going to rename that. We're going to rename this to collection items. After you do that, you can add whatever items you want to inside this folder. Parts are going to be pretty easy, but there's a few extra steps for the model. So let's go ahead and start with just the parts. So if I want to insert a part inside this folder, I can just click on the part button up here. After that, I can click it and drag it inside the folder. You want to make sure it's inside the folder like this and not on the outside. So just click on it and drag it to the folder. For each item that you put inside this collection folder, we're going to be adding an int value. So just click on the plus sign and then you're going to search for int value. You're going to right click on it and then press rename. We're going to change this to amount. So this is going to be the value for the part. So whatever you want the value to be when it's collected, you're going to store that right here. So for these golden balls right here, I chose a value of one. So I would just put a one right there. And just as a tip, so you don't have to repeat that process over and over again. What I would do is set up one part. So get one part set up inside the folder, add this amount value. And then all you're going to do from here is make copies of it. So you can just click on the part and use control D. Or you can right click on the part and then press duplicate. So once you make a couple copies of that, you can move them around the screen. And you can see for each of these parts, they automatically have that value. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can do models. So I'm going to grab this model from the toolbox. So I'm going to go to the home tab, click on toolbox. For this, I search for candy and the one I'm using is bowl of candies right here. So just go ahead and drag that into the game. What you want to do anytime you're searching for something in the toolbox is make sure there's no scripts attached with the model. To do that, you can just search for script up at the top here. So inside this model here, I'm just checking to make sure there's no scripts. So I see that there's a couple scripts inside this model. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. You can either delete the whole item or just delete the script. Okay, so there's one final script that I don't need. So I'm just going to delete that. And what I have now is just a model with parts, but there's no scripts inside that model that I have to worry about. Okay, so now I'm going to clear out this text up here. So I go back to normal. The next thing I'm going to do with this model is insert a part inside of it. So I have the model selected. I'm going to click on the plus sign and then I'm going to add a part. And there we go. So I'm going to locate that part inside the model. So there it is, it's selected. I'm gonna change the transparency to 0.5 for right now. Next, I'm going to anchor this part and then I'm going to scale it. So what I'm gonna be doing with this part is making a hitbox for the model. So I wanna scale this part to the same size as the model as closely as I can. And there we go, that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's close. I'm gonna rename this part to hit. And the final step, once you get the size right, we're gonna change the transparency to one. That's gonna make it invisible so the player can't see it. Like I said before, you don't wanna repeat that step over and over again for each model. So just make sure you do it one time for each type of model and then just make copies of it. The final step for this model is to add that amount value. So just click on the model. You're going to click on the plus sign. You're going to add that end value. And then you're going to rename it to amount. All right, and there we go. So making the models is a little bit more complex, but the basic steps are if you're going to be using one from the toolbox, go ahead and insert it and then check for scripts inside the model. If you don't need them or don't know what they are, just delete them. After that, you're going to make a hitbox by adding a part to the model, renaming it to hit and then scaling it to the size of the model. 
And the final step, you're going to be adding that int value and renaming it to amount. It's important that you follow all those steps because we're going to be referencing different parts of the model inside the script. Once you're finished, you should have a folder called collection items with all the items that can be collected in your game. This can be a combination of regular parts and also models as long as you follow the steps that I just showed you. Once you have all that set up, we're going to be adding a script inside the folder. So you can just click on the plus sign and then add a script. We're going to be adding a script in one other location and that's the one we're going to start with first. So inside the server script service, go ahead and add a script. The first thing we're going to do inside the script is say local and then currency. And we're going to set this equal to the name of the currency that we're going to use. So I used candy, but you can change that to whatever you want to. After that, we're going to say game dot players dot player added colon connect and then function. Inside the parentheses, we're going to get the player that joined the game. After that, we're going to create a leader stat folder. We'll say local leader stats. And that's going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put folder. Next, we're going to say leader stats dot name. And that's going to be equal to leader stats inside of quotation marks. And finally, we're going to store this with a player by saying leader stats dot parent is equal to PLR, our player. After that, we're going to make a value for the item. So we'll say local item. And that's going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside those parentheses, we're going to put int value. We're going to say item dot name. And that's going to be equal to our currency. So this will be the same as whatever you put up here. And finally, we're going to say item dot parent is equal to leader stats. Okay, so that'll set up a leader stats for us that'll keep track of how many items we've collected. Once that's completed, we're going to go ahead and go to the script that should be inside the folder now. Inside this script, we're going to start by saying local folder is equal to script dot parent. Then we're going to say local tool name, and we'll get to the tool in just a second. That's going to be equal to collector. This part doesn't have to be collector, but it does have to match whatever your tool's name is. So right here, I'm using collector because that's the same name as my tool. If you want to choose something different, that's fine. Just make sure those two match. After that, I'm going to say local currency. And that's going to be equal to candy. You want to make sure that this value right here matches what you have on the other script. Next, we're going to loop through all the different items inside the folder and add a touch event to them. So we're going to do that by saying for underscore comma obj. This is going to be shorthand for object in pairs. Inside here, we're going to say folder colon get children. On the outside, we're going to write do and then press enter. So we have two different things that we're looking for. We're either looking for a base part or a model. So we're going to cover those in two different cases. First, we'll say if object obj colon is a. Inside here, we're going to say base part. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say obj dot touched colon connect. And then inside the parentheses, we'll put function and then more parentheses. After that, we're going to press enter. Inside this function, we're going to connect to another function that we're going to write in just a second. So for now, we're just going to pretend like it exists already. So it's going to be collect item. And inside this parenthesis, we're going to pass two different things. We're going to pass the object. And the other item I forgot to put, but inside of this function right here, we're going to put other part. And that's going to be the other part that touches our collection items. So for this function here, we're going to pass the object that we're working with and also the other part. So right now it's going to underline it in red because we don't have that function defined yet, but just ignore that for now. We're gonna to get to that in just a second. Next to this end right here with the parenthesis, I'm gonna press enter. The other case is if we have a model. So I'm gonna say else if. If yours auto indents like mine just did, you just wanna make sure it's in line with the if statement above it. So make sure these two right here are in the same line vertically. All right, so we're gonna say else if, and then obj colon is a. Inside here, we're going to say model. And then we're going to be checking for one additional condition. So we're going to say and obj colon find first child. And what we're looking for is that hitbox. So inside here, we should have a part named hit. And that's what we're going to be searching for. 
So if those two are true, it's a model and it has that part inside of it. Then what I'm going to do is say object dot hit dot touched colon connect and then function inside the parentheses for function I'll put other part inside here is going to be the same so I'm going to say collect item and then pass those two parameters so I'm going to be object and other part and that'll do it for the for loop so now we just need to define that collect item function so we'll say local function the name of it should be collect item here we're going to get the two items that are passed so we're going to get the object and also other part inside this function we're going to start by saying local player and that's going to be equal to game dot players colon find first child inside here we're going to say other part dot parent dot name so this is going to look for the player that touches the item if we have a player then what we're going to do is we're going to say if player dot character colon find first child and then inside the parentheses we're going to put tool name so that's why it's important that this right here matches your tool name because we're going to be looking for that specific tool inside the player okay so if they do have that collection tool equipped then what we're going to do is we're going to say local amount and that's going to be equal to object dot amount so that's going to be that int value that we added to the parts. We're going to grab the value from it. So that value is what we store right here. And what we're going to do with that amount is give it to the player. So we're going to say player dot leader stats. And then we're going to say square bracket and then currency. After that, we're going to say dot value. And then we're going to say plus equals and amount. To prevent a whole bunch of touches, what we're going to do before we actually give the players the amount is destroy the object. So right here I'm going to say object, colon, and destroy. Down here I can see that this is still underlined even though I defined the function, but as you can tell I added an extra L. Okay, so everything looks good now. So let's go ahead and try this out and just make sure everything is working. I'm going to open up the output so we can see if we have any mistakes. So right now I can run into these items and nothing happens because I don't have my collection tool out. As soon as I equip that item, I can collect. You can see that for all the items here, they're worth one point because that's what I set for the amount value. And then for all the candy bowls, they're equal to 10. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.